The Trump presidency is um, one like none other. I, I don't know what to say specifically about it other than it's a little scary. After Trump won that election, I knew that as a Muslim American I could no longer sit on the sidelines and I really went out on a search for an organization that I could utilize my voice and that could be a platform for me to combat all of these messages that we're hearing about our Ummah. One of the very first things he says was that uh, he wants a complete and total shutdown of Muslims entering the country. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Just, he's made it very clear repeatedly that he doesn't want to be the president of Muslims. There has been a lot of attacks. Just the most recently attack has been the termination of DACA for uh, Dreamers. And I felt that we need to ensure that we stand up. We've heard that we're terrorists and we've heard that Islam is a religion of violence and all of these things. But that heightened with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump gave real power to those false narratives and I think that for me, my involvement in CARE is really utilizing this organization for us as Muslims to combat that narrative and to ensure that our side of this story is heard and that the truth about our religion is shared with both Muslims and non-Muslims. When there's a hate crime toward Muslims, uh, he's there, mum, it's silence. But when there's a Muslim perpetrator anywhere in the globe, he's immediately lumping all of us together. President Trump speaking about his controversial executive order, one that bars 134 million people from seven Muslim-majority countries from coming to the United States. It's not a Muslim ban, but we were totally prepared. It's working out very nicely. You see it at the airport, you see it all over. It's working out very nicely. And we're going to have a very, very strict ban, and we're going to have extreme vetting, which we should have had in this country for many years. Well, immigrant communities across the country are on edge after federal immigration agents arrested over 600 people in the past week in the largest raid since Donald Trump became president. It's very disappointing that he's the president. Uh, but it's an opportunity for us to come together uh, and, and fight. And uh, we should see it as a chance to unite with uh, fellow victims of hate crimes and hatred and, um, uh, and show power in numbers. You know, the current political climate, people older than I and wiser than I have said and are saying that this is the, the most divisive presidency ever. So the more you're on the balance of things on the other side to say, you know what, we need to bring people together with a single you know, solid voice against the hate, I think it makes for a better community. The most important thing we can do to stop divisive politics is to unite under the values that put us together in the first place, which is the right to be ourselves when it comes to the way we act, the way we talk, the way we worship. Here Arizona has built coalitions and alliances with so many other non-Muslim groups as a group that is targeted by not only the Trump presidency, but other groups, white supremacist groups, and I think some of our mosques have endured protests, armed protests, and I think building those coalitions and those relationships is very important. Latino brothers and sisters here in the state of Arizona, and they have been doing that. And you see what organizing gets you. They just got our pile out of office. That is a decade-long battle. Um, and as the Muslim community, that's exactly how we need to be organizing right now. I'm really proud of the growth that we've been able to achieve over the course of the last uh, six years uh, since I joined the organization. Now we have three full-time staff. We're one of the most quoted care chapters in America by far. We get global media attention, so I think we've done a good job of, of building our notoriety uh, publicly. But I want to engage our community on, on, on a much greater level. I think our community needs to be engaged um, on multiple levels where we're involved with the political process, where people are getting out there and they're motivated to be a part of the solution. And we need to be utilizing organizations like CARE as like hubs for all of us to come together because that's exactly what CARE is. It's an organization that's mobilizing the Muslim community to fight back. Uh, we're here every day fighting when the FBI indiscriminately harasses young Muslim men. We're here in the airports uh, protecting people that 
are randomly selected for extra screening. This is what we do. We fight hate crimes just this week, actually. We were in contact with the FBI to report a hate crime, and we also were in contact with a chief of police uh, to hold their feet to the fire and ask why they failed to report a hate incident as a hate crime. One of the things that we've been really working hard at is using our legal expertise and our legal staff to be able to fight for civil rights and then make the people who are violating our civil rights pay in court. So I think without CARE Arizona, we lose a lot as a community. At, at CARE Arizona, we have a full-time attorney. Previous attorney handled 60 cases last year, 2016 alone. We have our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers, our cousins, our family being put into ICE detention centers because of these policies. We have them dealing with these legal issues and we need organizations like CARE that already have the power to combat this. And it can't just be organizing, it can't just be legal, it can't just be getting in a room together, it has to be all of those things together. Since the aftermath of 9-11, we've seen so many people stick their heads in the sand, they, they feel that this, this era will pass, so I feel that us really building empowerment uh, on a community level will allow us to to achieve new heights for the organization. If you look at the amount of money that's being raised and spent on Islamophobia in particular, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. Certainly one chapter is not doing anywhere near that, even a fraction of that. So it takes a community effort. It takes within the community, outside of the community. If we take a step back and we look at the amount of civil rights complaints that we get on, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, the calls that we get, the FBI encroachment on communities, I asked myself the question and, and our team the question, what if we weren't here for the community? And um, it would be a, a real disaster for uh, Muslim Americans in Arizona if there was not a, a strong and thriving care Arizona. This is the time we need you to come out because right now, the way that we lose is divided. The way that we win is united. And that's exactly what we need. We need our allies and we need all of our most Muslim brothers and sisters to come out and stand right next to us and fight this battle with us. We are the only organization with a full-time uh, lawyer and uh, a full-time board, volunteer board that is dedicated to the Muslim cause politically uh, and on the civil rights side. Having an organization that's going to be there standing for you in the media on a day-to-day -day basis is something that's priceless. You know, people who are going to accur accurately represent our community, that's a priceless thing. People who are going to stand up when our rights are violated um, in the workplace or by law enforcement or by any other means, having that, knowing that that's there is extremely important. And that's what CARE Arizona does. It allows us as a community to have that legal battle. It allows us as a community to have that advocacy battle. Um, and we need to have both. And without CARE Arizona, I think we lose that. Um, and it's gonna take a really long time to rebuild that in this state for our community. We're an institution that is a part of the community. We're an extension of you and the community. I really want to thank the people who have come out year in and year out to support CARE. What I'm hoping um, is that, that our supporters will reach out to their friends, uh, to their family members, who may support us in their hearts, but aren't actually coming out and participating and try to bring them into the fold so that we have a broader base of support and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do that. So what can you do? Well, you can start by donating, by showing your support monetarily. If you have not supported us yet, please learn about us. Please ask any of us to inform you on how you can get involved. The legal system and the Constitution are here for you and CARE is here for you. Uh, so if you or anybody that you know face discrimination or experience a hate crime, please reach out to us. We're here to serve you. Uh, that's, that's literally all we do every day, all day. So please reach out.